Hey there, it's Joe Simons with Salt Strong here, Captain Mark Johnson, aka Hollywood, with Florida Keys Fun Fishing. Oh man, I love it! So we're talking all about the Universal Spanish Mackerel Rig. I know you guys have a certain time of the year with the Spanish Mackerel all over the place, but this rig you found, you can literally use it anywhere, Texas, the Carolinas, wherever you might find Max. Absolutely, it's a, it's a fail-safe rig to catch Spanish mackerels as well as a whole plethora of other creatures that you encounter uh, here when you're out in the Gulf chumming and fishing for mackerels. We catch 10 or 12 different species on any given day. Cool. What do we got? What's it look like? All right. So uh, for starters, Spanish mackerel have lots of teeth, right? And they're razor sharp. So when the bite's thick and they're happening, we're back to a piece of single strand wire. Okay. And for most mackerel fishing we do, it's only a number three or number four, which is on the lighter side. But again, you're only on a 10 pound spinning rod, so as much as you need. And then the rigging part with my fr frisky live shrimp. Uh, two things that we use almost exclusively is what is affectionately known here as a pompano jig. All right, it's heavy tied bucktail, but it's short. And it's on a 3 8 ounce jig head on a 3 aught black nickel wide gap hook. So you'll notice this looks exactly like the jig heads that we use almost exclusively for all kinds of fishing in the National Park and the Everglades and the Gulf, okay? The difference is this gives you a little more silhouette in the water. You can fish this with or without being shrimp tipped. And then of course, this one needs the live shrimp, mm -hmm. okay? So the rigging is exactly the same. It's just a preference if you have want to cast a whole lot more, okay, and limit some snapper bites and other things that we get. You might fish a naked bucktail, okay. or if you got kids in the boat or people who are eager to get a bite on every cast, there is nothing works better than a live shrimp on a jig head in South Florida. And okay? so that's normally your go-to when you got people on the Seven boat. Seven days a week. Tight lines. Yes. Okay. We bring a lot of shrimp, a lot of jig heads, and in everything out here eats a live shrimp from big to small, small to big. Yep. Everything eats a live shrimp, especially the people in the boat. They eat shrimp too. <laughs> All right, so let's tie a rig. So we're going to start with the pompano jig. So the haywire twist, very important. Okay. Make sure your loop is right. Make sure your space is there. And when you're twisting this, make sure that it is a twist together, not a wrap around the other with the wire. It needs to twist together to keep it from slipping. Once you get five or six twists there, hit your pliers out. You're going to grab that and you're going to make this tag in 90 degrees. And then you're going to spin what we call the barrel roll, which is five or six real close together wraps. Okay. And one thing about wire, you never ever cut it. So you're going to want to show you guys how to kink this off. Once you're here, you make 90 degree, we call it the handlebar. Once you're there, you grab this and you rotate it. That wire kinks right off. And we've talked about this before. Joe, but I can't stress it enough. You need to kink that wire, rub your fingers there so it does not hang you up no tag. and bleed. If you cut that, you will bleed. Okay? So that's your that's your standard way we rig. You're somewhere between 12 and 20 inches of wire. Pompano jig, ready to go. And then what are you doing from uh, from there to the to your braid? Yeah, actually from here mono? we go to mono and uh, we tie what they call the Albright special which is how you go from line to wire without a swivel. And the reason being, funny you brought that up, is that Spanish mackerel are very uh, slash kind of feeders. And so when you got a fish on and he's running around the back of the boat, that swivel creates a little bubble trail on the water. Could also flash a little bit if they're silver, not black. And a lot of times a mackerel will hit that swivel, yeah. which then cuts your whole leader off. And then when you have to re-rig, you got to re-rig all of it. So what we have learned is how to tie what we call the Albright Special. So all of our inshore gear almost always has two or three feet of 20 or 30 pound tied to the braid because that's most universal. You can fish wire for mackerel in the morning and then if you're going to go into the Everglades and fish for snook, you can cut the wire off and your basic leader is still there. So you would just take the very end of this. You almost double it over and kink it like that, okay? And then your tag end here goes in. 
and you're going to wrap around both of these wires. Okay, you go down the wire, call it five or six times, and then you turn around and go back up the wire five or six times, okay? So now, when you get to the end, what do I do? So you look at your mono, and you'll see that it goes in the wire from one side, so you want your tag end to go in and out the other side, creating that V. So once you get to that, then, like most things in life, they work better when they're wet. You gotta wet that a little bit, and you're gonna slide this down until it comes nice and tight. You'll see how that cinched right there. Oh yeah. Perfect, all right? Now, you're not done yet. Once you're here, in any knot that you tie, you always wanna give your tag end a little pull to make sure that it's tight, all right? And then when you snip this, you always want to leave just a smidge in there so that if you got a big fish on and this knot cinches down a little more, no chance for it to come unraveled. Now, one of the things that we've uh, improved the all-time Albright knot is instead of having this big tag align and cutting this back, we've established that if you cut it, you're going to bleed, right? We would finish this off very similar to the haywire twist. You would just get a couple wraps. Okay, now you're just trying to get rid of this end. So you're just a couple wraps, make your 90 degrees, the handlebar, kink your wire, pop, and break it off, right? So Perfect. now you have your rig. So then this end would be tied to your braid, which we use a no-name knot or a surgeon's knot, a blood knot, uni knot, whatever you like, okay? You got your 30-inch piece of mono here, leader. You got a real nice knot here, your Albright Special finish so you don't touch and bleed. You got 18 inches of number three wire, haywire twist, pompano jig. Love it. All right. And again, you can tip this with shrimp. You can fish it naked. You can cast it a bunch. Uh, it's very universal for fishing for Spanish mackerel as well as all the other species you catch in the process. Cool. You want to show the other one with uh... Yeah. So it looks just like this, except that it's really naked. So once again, plain jig head, three eighths ounce. Three odd hook, color of the head is not as important as one would think. Again, the haywire twist. Are most you ever important. changing up the, the size of the jig head or is that um, you, you can change the size if you're in a whole lot of current. Okay, you can make it heavier, maybe go to a half ounce. Or if you have no current, you can go down to a quarter ounce. But um, all the jig manufacturers will make different weights and keep the same size hook because yep. that's gonna go on the shrimp regardless of the, the weight side, okay? So you're here. Again, can't stress this enough. You get five or six wraps there to finish the barrel roll. And then you never ever cut wire, okay? You hold it with your pliers, make your handlebar, rotate that wire, it kinks off, it's perfect. Now, the live shrimp. We use this bait exclusively in the Keys for just about everything down here eats a shrimp. State of Florida, anywhere you go, the shrimp is key. So to fish a shrimp on a jig head where you're going to be casting in a lot, we find that the best way to rig it is to pinch the tail off, which again makes a nice way to tip your pompano jig. And you're going to take this and you're going to slide it in the back of this shrimp. So watch how this goes. This is very crucial. So you keep the feet, the legs of the shrimp pointing away. The hook goes in the back, and you gently just rotate that shrimp all the way up and around. See how the shrimp bends? Now, you got this black spot here, which is the brain of the shrimp. In this application, it doesn't really matter if you touch it, go through it. The shrimp's not going to be on there long enough to worry about being alive or dead. And you're here. Come all the way up and through. Now, your bait is on there. Perfect. So your finished product looks like that. So why is that so important? A couple things. When this is in the water, in the current, and you want it to swim, you're always pulling from the smaller side of the shrimp versus the bigger side. If you pull from the big side, a lot of times your shrimp wants to spin in the water. That's as far from natural as it gets, okay? So once you get to here, it also you notice your shrimp likes to stay on there nice and straight because you're sort of against the grain. If you put the shrimp on upside down, the shrimp naturally likes to curl, and then you end up with a shrimp on here, I'm gonna just do it really quick. You put this on backwards, okay? And a lot of times it'll slide down and it wants to get a curl like that. And then when you cast it and retrieve it, 
it again spins really bad and it doesn't look natural. So you pinch the tail off, keep the legs away, thread in the back, bend it up against the grain, up around the shank of the hook, and finish it off like that. And believe it or not, when you're casting this, versus I watch sometimes folks just take a shrimp and they just stick it on like this or however you want, when you cast it, it's much more aerodynamic. It doesn't spin, helicopter spin in the air. And then when you drag this through the water, this spins just terribly. And then also too, if you look, you don't have a whole lot of meat in the game here. You have a little bit of hook on your shrimp. So fish can come and pull at your shrimp and get it off your hook. So again, if you can keep as much hook as you can in this shrimp, all right, you're good for a few casts. It swims in the water straight, and that gets your bite. Cool. So what about retrieval uh, tips? So retrieving these, again, mackerel fishing, usually we're on the anchor. We have a chum bag out the back, and so you're casting out the back of the boat. Close your bail. You let it sink a little, and depending on the current, what you don't want it to do is go to the bottom and sit. So if you have light current, you might have to jig your rod tip and wind a little bit faster mm -hmm. versus if you have a lot of current. If you have a lot of current, this will never touch the bottom and it'll almost hold it up on its own. So your retrieve could be minimal. And again, just jigging with your rod tip, just breaking your wrist. Just a little pop. That's it. Make this thing go up and down to show some sort of life. So when you're mackerel fishing, again, you might catch snappers and trouts and bluefish and blue runners and jacks and ladyfish and sharks. Everything out there eats it. This rig is universal for all that. Cool, that's awesome, man. Okay, and then your finished product on the end of the day is on your spinning rod. 10 pound spinning rod, give or take. You got your pompano jig, your wire, your leader, and the advantage of that, hold this, is that when you're done mackerel fishing and you're gonna come in and change gears, all you need to do is just clip off your wire. Your piece of 20 or 30 is left, and then you can re-rig whatever it is you want, and go right back to fishing. So the re-rigging is minimal, okay? Tie on your bucktail or your jig head or whatever it is you're gonna go fish with, and you're done. And then it works the same. If you started out in the morning fishing around the trees with no wire, and then you decide to go mackerel fishing, you clip this off, okay? You go right back to the, the rig that you saved, you clip your wire off, and retie it again. So no swivels, doesn't need to be complicated rigging. You're accomplishing two or three types of fishing with one basic knot change is all you're doing. Five times down, five times back up. And remember, whatever way your line's going in, your tag end needs to go opposite. So for here, you can see the running lines going in, tag, tag line goes out, you wet it, all right, cinch it down nice and tight. You always check your tag in, make sure you give it a little tug. All right, clip it, never too close, leave a little bit, and then finish your wire with just a couple twists here. All right, and then remember the handlebar, 90 degrees, rotate kink, break it off. So now you're right back to mackerel fishing. So you can mackerel fish without wire, and you're gonna catch them. But if they start biting out of control crazy, you're gonna get cut off so much that you're gonna retie endlessly, so that's when it's time to switch with wire. So again, having that piece of 30 or 20 tied to your wire can just make your rigging nightmares half as much. All right, so Mark, I know a lot of people uh, talk about using spoons for Spanish mackerel. Thought, thoughts on that? Yes, you know, the spoon has been around a long time like a bucktail, it's caught an amazing amount of fish, all different species, and it is very popular for mackerel fishing. You have the Clark spoon, the old crocodile spoon, you have them single hooks, you have them treble hooks, and they are very effective, especially for trolling and or casting. Here in the Keys and in South Florida, the Everglades and the Gulf, we're faced with an awful lot of floating grass, and so therefore the treble hooks become quite a pain in the butt, as well as in the charter business, 
we believe you know safety comes first and so the last thing we want is a bunch of guys and kids winging around some treble hooks because believe it or not the number one fishing related injury in the emergency room is somebody with a treble hook in some part of their body so us in the keys we don't fish a whole lot of spoons but i know in the carolinas up the coast in texas where they might have a lot less floating grass yeah. they have a lot of different applications that spoon is a fantastic lure to use but I think earlier, as we pointed out, the advantage of having that pompano rig or even just the jig head with a shrimp, you're going to be able to catch all kinds of stuff out there. Not that you can't with a spoon, but when you have a shrimp either tipped on there or is your main part on the, on the jig head, I mean, if you're out there with kids or family, you're... Yes, when you're in the charter business, a lot of our business is trying to get as many bites as possible. Yeah. And there is nothing that beats a shrimp on the jig head uh, or a tipped... Uh, pompano jig. That is a bite almost every cast of some sort and that keeps the attention span of the kids and yeah. folks who maybe are new at fishing. All right and then of course we fish guys that fish a lot that want to fish artificial only and if you're a bass fishing background kind of guy and you like to make a thousand casts you know you can fish a naked jig, you can fish a spoon, it's going to eliminate a lot of the fish that you're maybe not targeting yep. but that's the nature of the beast. Cool good stuff man. If you guys have any questions about rigging for Spanish mackerel, let us know down below. For more saltwater fishing tips, check out saltstrong.com and check out this man in the book, An Amazing Experience with You and Your Family. Go check out www.floridakeysfunfishing.com. Nailed it, man. My man. <laughs> There's something about the water that'll give you peace. All by yourself or with your family Live salt strong and wear the line today